Since the war started, Ukraine hasn't claimed any strikes into Russia at all. Ukrainian commentators say this attack could be a Russian false flag operation meant to justify a later Russian mobilization. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov says the attack could hamper ongoing peace negotiations, which only fueled the false flag allegations. The White House was asked about this, and Jen Psaki wouldn't comment on either side's claims. We have seen uh, those reports. We're not in a position to comment on the Kremlin's statements. We've seen the people of Ukraine fight valiantly in the face of unprovoked Russian brutality, but there is one aggressor here, and that is President Putin and the Russian military. During negotiations on Tuesday, Russia said it would scale down operations in the northern regions of Kyiv and Cherniv, but officials in those areas say the fighting hasn't stopped. There also appears to be friction between top military leadership and the on-the-ground forces of both warring countries. Moscow is struggling to supply their own troops with food, fuel, and ammunition as their army suffers serious losses. And last night, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky announced he fired two top generals for being what he called traitors. He also rebuked NATO countries. Zelensky says they're hesitating from providing enough assistance. This comes as Russian troops reportedly confiscated 14 tons of humanitarian aid. A Ukrainian minister says 12 buses filled with humanitarian aid were raided even after Russian forces had agreed to reopen the evacuation corridor. That includes 45 buses bound for the besieged city of Mariupol. Now there are conflicting reports over whether or not Biden's massive military package has even reached Ukraine. Senators on both sides of the aisle say this administration has been slow walking the process and have not laid out a plan on how to replenish the weapons from the stockpile. But Pentagon spokesman John Kirby says the administration has already sent about half a dozen lethal aid shipments from Biden's $800 million security assistance package. The $800 million uh, that, that uh, the president approved, what, more than just over, I don't know, a week or week, 10 days ago, I mean, that, those shipments are already arriving. In fact, from the time he signed the order to the first shipment going on its way was like four days. I would tell you that things aren't sitting long at these intermediate uh, staging shipment sites. On Wednesday, the Pentagon said small kamikaze switchblade drones have not yet been delivered, and a larger, more powerful version of that drone was not yet approved in the administration's weapons package. Joining us now is Oklahoma Senator James Lankford, who's a member of the Senate Homeland Security Committee. Senator, thanks so much for joining us tonight. You're among a bipartisan group of senators demanding the Biden administration provide a full account of weapons sent to Ukraine and what's left in the stockpile. So tell us about the recent letter you sent to the administration. Yeah, so there's a big difference between it's in the mail and it's actually arrived. And right now the Biden administration keeps saying we're sent it or they'll say things like it's in transit or we've already started it or even in the clip that you just played. It just took us four days to get it started to be able to get there. The people of Ukraine are saying, hey, if you're going to help us fight this, actually, by sending us some, uh, some of those supplies, actually have them get here. Don't just talk about how to logistics to, to be able to get them over. Get them here. That's what we really need. They're trying to fight to defend their country from a Russian onslaught. They don't want excuses that it's in the mail. They want it to actually be received. Right. And look, you guys agree with senators on both sides of the political aisle, but the Pentagon spokesperson absolutely disagrees. John Kirby says those shipments were moving within the first four days of the war. Senator, so what's the real story here? Is the administration slow walking this? Yeah. Or are they actually delivering the weapons needed to Ukraine? Yeah, again, I go back to their moving within four days is very different than they were received within four days. The people of Ukraine don't need to know that it's on its way. They just need to know when it's going to be delivered. And all these different munitions they keep talking about in these different weapon systems, it always seems to be the plan. Now, there are items that have been delivered to them. It's very helpful. The Ukrainian leadership is very, very appreciative to it. They're just saying, hey, you keep promising us other shipments are going to arrive. They just need to be able to get here. Uh, Senator, moving on to a, another geopolitical foe of the United States, China. Uh, they're accusing the United States of instigating the war in Ukraine and says NATO should have been disbanded following the breakup 
of the Soviet Union. China's foreign ministry spokesperson says, quote, the culprit and leading instigator of the Ukraine crisis, the U.S., has led NATO to engage in five rounds of ex uh, eastward expansion in the last two decades after 1999. So China stands to gain a whole lot from this conflict, regardless of who wins. So, Senator, how does China's meddling in all this affect the eventual outcome? Yeah, China is basically saying if there's no NATO, then Russia could do whatever they want. That's the reason we have a NATO, is to be able to keep Russia from running all over Europe. The, the European gathering there in the NATO alliance is all about keeping the Russians from actually moving and rolling over their neighbors. So, again, for, for China to say, hey, if there's no NATO, there'd be no problem, basically he's saying then Russia could just do whatever they want. The big winners in this long term, they're trying to be able to shape are Russia, Iran, and China. Those are clearly the opponents of the civilized world to be able to actually engage and to actually want peace in the region. I, I'm so glad you brought up Iran. Look, the Trump administration was able to make peace deals in the Middle East in large part because it rallied the region around the idea of stopping Iran, which, of course, was a common enemy. And now the Saudis won't even take a call from President Biden because he's burnt the bridge by negotiating with the world's largest state sponsor of terror. So that's forced Saudi Arabia into the arms of China. So how dangerous is that for the future of this country? Yeah, exceptionally dangerous. We need to have peace in the Middle East. And again, President Trump over and over again said that he's going to do peace negotiations a very different way. The Abraham Accords were a very different way to be able to take on peace. When he actually engaged with uh, with other nations and formed the Abraham Accords, uh, John Kerry had said there's no way to do it. Others had said there's no way to do it. But Trump actually got that done. And when we got it done, you've got five nations in that region that are actually forming peace agreements, UAE, Bahrain, Sudan, uh, Morocco, and Israel. They're all looking for that unity on it. Now, amazingly enough, President Biden is actually working with Russia while Russia is bombing Ukraine. President Biden's working with Russia to then for Russia to be our lead negotiator with Iran. I can't make this stuff up. It's just so bizarre that our State Department would use as a proxy Russia to negotiate with Iran a new nuclear deal. It's a terrible idea. Hey, guys, it's Rob Carson. Experts are warning the current 40-year inflation high will only get worse. So you got to protect your IRA with gold. Get a free info kit like this one at birchgold.com slash Newsmax. There's no cost. There's no obligation. Just get your free info kit at birchgold.com slash Newsmax.